Seconds out, delighted to be joined by unbeaten cruiserweight Nathan Thorley due to challenge for the Commonwealth title against Chris Billum-Smith at Fight Camp. How you doing? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Training hard. Um, trying to look after myself the best I can in uh, in lockdown, you know. But hopefully coming to the end of it now. But uh, yeah, all good. Yourself? Yeah, good. How, how have you been able to cope with the lockdown situation? Have you had facilities that you can use? Yeah, luckily I've had a I've had a few facilities I've been able to use, and you know the road is uh, the road is free. You can always just get, get outside and jump on a road. So been slamming the road work in as well. And you've had a, a kind of strange uh, road to where we are now. You started off as a light heavyweight um, and got probably the best win of your pro career against Jermaine Asari down at that weight. What was it that convinced you to make the move up? Because it is the biggest jump in professional boxing in terms of the weight from light heavy to cruiser. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's, a, it's like a nigh on two stone jump. Um, to, well, to, to be honest, I was really struggling to make light heavyweight. Um, I was doing things that obviously, as a boxer, you shouldn't be doing. Um, I had a chat with Gary, and look, I just sat with Gary and said, "Look, I'm really struggling to make light heavy." And uh, Gary's words were, look, you're a big lump. You're six foot four. Just go up. He said, you'll, you'll fill into the frame. And that's exactly what I've done. I've been, I've been with strength and conditioning coaches now for a while. And um, it's just put, put the muscle on where I need it to be. And I, f- I feel a 10 times better fighter, stronger, fitter, more energy. Um, I, d- I just feel better in myself. You mentioned Gary there. It's obviously Gary Lockett, your trainer. Just tell us a little yeah. bit about him and what he's brought to your game since you turned over. Um, well, well, I was with a guy, Chris Davis, first of all, um, up until a certain point. And I, you know, no, no offense to Chris, he he, he took he took me far. He took me to win a Welsh title, and thanks for doing that. But um, I just think he couldn't have took me further. But with Gary, um, I think Gary's got the knowledge, the experience. Um, and he's got to he got to that level himself where he knows he knows what he's talking about. He's like he's been in the corners with the likes of Gavin Reese, Enzo Macronelli, Liam Williams, Chris Jane. The, the list is endless. So to have a man of that caliber in my corner is I'm I'm very happy with with Gary at the moment. Now you've obviously won that Welsh title down at light heavyweight. Since moving to Cruz, you haven't had that acid test yet. This is it against Chris yeah. Adam Smith. What do you think that could be a slight disadvantage on your part that you haven't mixed in that opposition before? Whereas Billum Smith's obviously fought Richard React, Paul, Craig Glover, people of that nature. Um, not really, because I know I know amateur and pro is different. I know I know that, but uh, I was I've gone from fighting the best fighters in the world as an amateur to fighting people I'm you know sometimes I'm struggling to get motivated for. You know, no offense to these boys, they they're coming in, you know they. They're tough lads, you know. I think the last time I was really up for a fight was um, Jermaine Azar. You know that was like that. But with this, but then as soon as they mentioned Chris Billum Smith, now it was like right, hundred percent. And I think fighting someone decent or not decent, a good fighter will bring the, the best out in me because I'm I'm motivated to. I know I've I've got to have to perform. I have to I have to fight my heart out to, to get the win. You mentioned the uh, amateur pedigree there. You're obviously a Commonwealth Games medalist, among other accolades. What Are there any yeah. uh, people you fought as an amateur that we know of now as notable pros or anything like that? Um, oh, the, the one fella, he, did, he was an Italian. Um, he'd been to, he went to the London Olympics. He went to Beijing Olympics. Um, I can't, I, to be honest, I can't remember his name. Clemente F- Russo, F- maybe? No, F- Fiori. He liked every week he was. And um, it was a good fight. Yeah, like, it was a close fight. Really, really good fight. And um, I lost on points. On a sp- I think I lost on a split, I think. But um, it's fighters like that that, that have given me the, the, the knowledge and the experience that, I, that I've got now, that I'm able to take, to, that I've able, been able to carry over into the pro ranks. When you first heard about the opportunity to go into the fight camp, uh, card and the fact that it's in the Matchroom HQ back garden and it's all a bit different, no crowd obviously. What what did you make of the whole concept? Um, I, I, well, I jumped at it to be honest because it's 
it's once in a lifetime. When is this going to happen again? You know, to be to be just to be part of something like this is it's it's a great opportunity. You know, and to come out winning, it's it's an, it's an even bigger. People are going to remember it because it's oh you you fought behind closed doors when we were in the middle of a pandemic, no crowd. You know, it's it's an amazing thing to um to do. I I, I believe anyway. What do you make of Chris Billum Smith? Have you studied him much? What can you tell us about his strengths and weaknesses? Um, he's he's a very good he's a very good fighter. He um he stands tall. I find um he's very he's very physically strong, very physically strong. Um, you know he got he got a good shot selection. I think up to the bo- to body and head. You know, um, it's it's going to be a good fight. I, I think. I think I'm the. I'm going in as the unknown. Nobody knows who I am. There's not much on me. Um, so people are like, oh, you know, Chris. Chris is just going to do a number on him. But believe me, I, he's really not. I'm. Um, he's, he is a good fighter. I'm not taking anything away from him. He's, he's a class act, and I, I also believe he. He should be. He should be. Was it WBO? That international title he fought oh, for yeah. against React. React for. I also believe he should have that title with him because. I don't think he lost to React both personally. So where do you find your advantages? Apart from the fact that you are a bit of an unknown quantity, you're taller, ranger, is that part of it? What where do you see your advantage without giving your game plan away, obviously? Um I'm just big I'm just big and awkward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, against against good I just like to make things awkward for people. It's you know, it's that's that's just part of me. No, don't, don't, don't give too much away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what are the kind of big ambitions beyond Chris Billum Smith if everything goes well at Fight Camp? What what's the kind of pathway for you after that, do you think? Um well what why not fight um React Paul? You know, he's a British title header that I, I I believe someone told me they've seen in an interview that he's come out and said that um he knows he hasn't got much ability, he just got got a big punch. I haven't seen myself you know but I think a good boxer just keep nice and tight I think he's he's beatable as well but um, you know I'm, I'm by no means am I looking past Chris I've got a job to do with Chris and it's you know it's a, it's a, and it's a tough job to do you know it's he's in Ed Yearn's garden against a real tough tough op- op- opponent so it's one I'm training hard for one I'm looking forward to and one I'm extremely motivated for and just tell us a little bit about yourself outside the ring. Are you a full time pro? Have you got family, kids, that kind of thing? Um, well, I wasn't a full time pro until COVID hit. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I, I work part time in the leisure centre as a lifeguard and a, a relief assistant manager there. Um, just me and my me and my girlfriend. We've got our own house. No kids yet. We um, we got a dog on Tuesday. He's about there somewhere. <laughs> But uh, no, I, I live quite a, just a, quite a relaxed life. I don't really, I'm not, I don't go partying. I don't, I'm not a massive fan of drinking. You know, I just try and keep myself to myself, really. And if there's people out there that want to follow you a bit more closely, how can they find you on social media? Um, well, I'm on Twitter. Um, I believe it's Nathan Thorley one, I think. Um, and then um, Instagram, I think it's Nathan Thor instead of Thorley. Um, and Facebook really, and that's that's the only ones I use. And I, I post a lot on on each of them about my boxing and what's coming up and where I'm going. Great stuff. We we'll really appreciate your time and look forward to watching you in action at Fight Camp. Cheers, mate. Thanks for uh, thanks for the interview, and uh, hopefully speak to you soon. Great. Take care, mate. Speak soon. Sarah. <laughs>